Hello everyone and welcome to Making Constructible O'Neill Cylinders Possible in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. So this is a part development video and I'm presenting the progress so far on a project I've been working on and that is to make possible the construction of really 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 big stations called O'Neill Cylinders that are 1.2 kilometers long and have a radius enough so that if you rotate them they can generate uh, well, a lot of gravity, let's put it that way. Uh, so the way I've done it is to make, well, plates that will be dockable to each other along a hub. And these plates are also extendable via an animation, but we have to be careful about that because when you have an animation, uh, generally speaking, except for Infernal Robotics is magic, uh, you can't have a docking port on the animated parts. So what I've got is a sort of a docking hub in the middle and then when we say extend it becomes a large plate like this. And I don't know if the stats will be right. Yeah, that's about right. So the width is 150 meters and the length is 200 meters right now. Uh, the mass is debatable. Uh, for now I just used the surface area and assumed it was aluminum. Of course if there was really soil and trees and stuff like that that would be a lot more, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, there's a bare minimum amount of vessel mass for now. And uh, the thing about this is that this plate has changing textures, so that there's a 1.2, 1-3, 1-4, 1-5, and 1-6, and the first six, if it's a 1 dash, then they all actually go in sequence with each other. In other words, uh, the edges match. Uh, so there's six plates in a row, that's how it makes the 1.2 kilometers because it's 200 meters each and the six plates each uh, can, I mean, all together can make a single continuous landscape. Uh, but of course there needs to be other things, there's just one side in fact. So yeah, I've got not six but 18 different options taken of course from various Google Maps. Well, I mean, it's not various, uh, but they're all sort of the generally the same area. But anyway, uh, the fact that we've got this hub here that's sort of in an awkward position is unfortunate, but it was the only way I could figure out how to do this. The way it's actually constructed is first with a back piece. Uh, so here it is, very plain texture right now. I'll improve upon it, but I mainly had to work on the animation because right now it's fairly small at uh, 70 meters by 70 meters, oh, there we go, and 10 meters in what it calls length, but it has an animation that extends stuff that is tucked inside so that ultimately becomes 300 meters by 300 meters. And then it is a proper backplate for an O'Neill cylinder with 150 meter radius which will rotate. And of course rotation requires RCS ports on the plates and we have those as well. Uh, probably quite a lot of fuel too but and I'm using hydrazine right now. But anyway to this back plate is connected these, uh, these core tubes. So core tubes first. I can get this. And there's docking ports on everything but only one on each because you can't have two docking ports on things so even the back plate has a docking node this has a docking node uh, but of course this can only have a docking node on one side so there's also this docking port option but I would prefer to actually connect a whole bunch of these together when I launch it we'll see if that will work out that depends on the launcher uh, but yeah, we can't have them folded up necessarily because then the docking ports won't work. Oops, I need that over there. These are each 66 meters. Now, I'm going to have to zoom a bit. You need a lot of room to work with these kinds of things. And the plates are 200 meters in length. So 66 plus 66 plus 66, it's uh, 198. And then one of these core tube docks is two meters. So that's 200 meters. Okay, and then what we do is we have these cylinder plate docks and we want six of these on here. 
uh, six, like that. But they're not quite at the center. I'll put the plate on and then adjust its position because right now they're not quite where they need to be. But on each of those, we not that one. We have these plate tubes. I, I was thinking about making these hollow. We need one plate tube like that. Another like that. And then we can add the plates. So a populated plate. Uh, we just want one. And then extend. Well, that doesn't quite match up where I wanted it. Let's get this part right. I'm pretty sure I wanted it right at the edge. So something has gone wrong. Maybe I allowed for an extra one of these? I forget. Oh, maybe that's it. There we go. Got another segment like that, and then it works out. So then it meets the edge properly. And aside from these populated plates, we also have these clear plates. So I need one more of these. And I'll have to put arrows to indicate which side is actually the side that has the docking node. But okay, so we don't have that. And then we extend the clear plate, and it's like that. I swear it's clear outside they're clear. And so that allows sunlight. But technically the clear plates need flaps on them, which I haven't made. Uh, so they close up during the night and allow people to sleep. Otherwise, the sun is always there, right? So that would be inconvenient. The good news is that these plates do have RCS ports to maneuver themselves into place. The tubes do not. The tubes will need little tugs to get them into place. And then, of course, we'll have another populated plate like over here. Okay, and so forth. And along the way, you'll have more of these. Six sets. Okay, I don't think I lined it up quite right. I think we might need another docking port. And in theory, these little maps work with each other. So if that's one, maybe this is two. Um, no, I'm not entirely sure. That's okay, about 2 1 up there. And 2 2. Ah, I can't quite see. Anyway, that was how they were made. I forget which way around they need to be. But they ought to allow for each other to match up one way or another. I'll have to figure that out. I'll have to look at my references again. But anyway, they're there. Uh, of course, it's a little bit cut off, right? Because these are actual ground maps. I didn't like make them or generate them specifically for this purpose. That made them a little bit higher definition and made it easier to get them readily available. But yeah, there are flaws in that plan. But this is how we can construct a, an O'Neill cylinder and with a few launches. It's going to take a bunch of launches. Uh, now you might be wondering, okay, we're talking about this base plate is 70 meters in diameter. That's really hard to launch, right? And even these when folded up are huge compared to normal launch vehicles. You're not going to launch this on anything that we've got regularly. Well, let me just save this temporarily to use it as a demonstration later. I don't know if an apostrophe will work, so I'm leaving that out. Well, as it so happens, I already designed the solution to this problem, and that is the station carrier. Looks really small at this point, but 
It's actually fairly large. As you can see, its height is 77 meters. And its width, importantly, is 62.8 meters. And when we lower its engines, they go like that. And there are a whole bunch of... Are they? Uh, which ones are they? <laughs> um, whichever engines I decided to put on them, hydrogen and oxygen, some obnoxious engine that could give us maximum power. And this whole thing is 31,000 tons. But with this, let's bring up the cylinder stuff again. You can see the back plate here can easily nestle into here. Just like that. Plenty of space. I'll have to create a mount. So that's a 70 meter diameter backplate, and that's what the station carrier was made to do. It was made to carry the payloads underneath it, because carrying this on top would require a ridiculous fairing that I didn't want to deal with. So now we can put it underneath, and it'll be all right. And that's what the station carrier is all about. And so these clear plates, well, no problem. Okay, maybe a little bit of, bit of a problem there. Uh, I'll have to put a little extender in there so that it's placed like this, but then it still fits. And of course the populated plates also fit right there. Uh, so yeah, I need a little mount, as I've already said. And then of course the, the core tubes and all, well, they'll hang a little bit like so. We'll probably be able to send four of them at a time though, so that's good. But yeah, they'll hang down and potentially get torched by the engines. Or we could somehow mount them um, maybe two at a time like that, and that'll work out. I'll decide exactly how I want to launch these, but I'll test everything out and we'll see how this goes. But this is what the station carrier was all about. And now we can carry our O'Neill cylinder to space and construct it. So that's the plan. You can see all the little bits of the back plate there tucked in. Those are the ones that extend out. A little bit cheaty, but um, how, you know, if you want to construct it, you're going to have to have some sort of magic. And there's the magic. So anyway, that's the idea. That's the O'Neill cylinder construction concept and the parts I've made for it. And whether it can actually be done is something I'll have to see, but we have the tool to do it. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.